Does anyone remember Full Throttle, Venom Energy, Cocaine? Yeah, there were some insane ones back then. So today, come join me as we look through the top 10 wildest energy drinks from the 2000s. Now for this list, we're not looking at the big brands like Monster, Ampa, Red Bull. We're going to be focusing on some of the more hidden gems that were really influenced by the era. Starting with Pimp Juice. Pimp Juice was a brand of non-carbonated energy drinks created by Nelly, based on his song of the same name. It's one of the first celebrity owned energy drinks and marks the first step of energy drinks entering hip hop subculture. It was released August 2003 and reported to sell over 1 million cans in their first 3 months of business. It originally was only available regionally in the south and midwest but quickly expanded nationally and eventually internationally. The drink has faced controversy since its release though, with some women's organizations boycotting the drink claiming it glamorizes sexist ideas. That wasn't its only issue as it also came under fire for promoting negative black stereotypes. Both Nelly and the co-founder of the brewery where the drink is made defended the drink claiming that the term pimp has changed through the years and claimed it symbolizes success and wealth. They also donated a portion of proceeds to Nelly's organization for show for kids. Full Throttle Full Throttle is an energy drink created and produced by Coca-Cola, first being introduced in late 2004. The brand is known for its classic automotive inspired design, as well as sponsoring the National Hot Rod Association from 2008 to 2012. But in 2015, Monster Beverages and Coca-Cola pulled a swap. Coke gave all of its energy drinks to Monster, and Monster gave all of its non-energy drinks to Coke. Once owned by Monster, Full Throttle was still being produced but underwent a more Wild West patriotic biker rebranding. Now the drink is seen being associated with cowboys and bikers and less of the hot rod scene. It's still nationally available in most stores in the US. Cocaine Cocaine Energy, also known as No Name, is an insanely caffeinated energy drink produced by Reddix Beverages. Released in September 2006 by Jamie Kirby, the drink was originally meant to be named Reboot, but having already been taken, Kirby decided to go with cocaine for its controversial potential. Of course, the drink did not contain any cocaine, but was quickly criticized by lawmakers and anti-drug movements for glamorizing the idea of using cocaine to teens. It's said that the only marketing Kirby did was send a free case of it to the New York Post, hoping to get some attention. And it worked, as he earned $1.5 million in the first three months of the drink's release. In 2007, the FDA sent a warning letter to the company, forcing them to change their name to No Name. But they got so much support from fans that just another year later in 2008, they went back to the original name. Today, you might see one in a store, but usually you'll have to order some from the website to try it. Venom Venom is an energy drink produced by Keurig Dr. Pepper and one of the few energy drinks available in thick aluminum bottles. Released in 2002, the drink was originally named Element Energy and sold in a typical energy drink can. Eventually, sales started to die off for the drink which forced them to do a major rebranding in 2008. Coming back as Venom Energy, they started to lean into the over-masculine stereotype energy drinks were victim to back then. They started partnerships with both the Arena Football League in 2008, as well as sponsored the Andretti Autosport IndyCar series the same year. They even managed to snag Terry Crews as an official spokesperson for the brand, but yet again shortly after they got their name back out there, they decided that was enough with the fancy sponsors and relied purely on the fans they had just made and regular energy drink consumers. They're still sold today and can be found in multiple retailers nationally. C4 Introduced in 2009 through Cellusor Company, C4 was one of the first widespread marketed pre-workout drinks. And to be honest, it's kind of been through nothing but trouble. In 2012, the state of California held a lawsuit against GNC, Cellusor's parent company, claiming their drink contained the synthetic stimulant DMAA, which needs drug classification on the labeling and needs to be approved by the government. Later that same year, the drink came under controversy again from the Interscholastic Athletics Association for containing the performance enhancing agent Sinopharine HCL, which was what they used to replace the DMAA, quite ironic. But because of this, it started gaining a bit of hate from the workout community itself, not just for its shady recipes, but because they claim it doesn't actually do much for pre-workout anyway, claiming it's more similar to a caffeine buzz from just a regular energy drink. Even through all that, the drink manages to be sold today among most retailers and even has expanded their line of products massively. Street King Street King is our second hip-hop based drink here, which was released by 50 Cent in 2011. 
It was marketed heavily through social media, with people like Pauly D and Joan Rivers helping 50 promote the brand. A year later, in 2012, however, they rebranded to just SK Energy and marketed it to more athletes to compete with 5 Hour Energy. While most notably, the drink promises to make a donation to the United Nations World Hunger Fund for every bottle sold. However, 50 Cent's accountant in 2015 testified that the drink was losing millions. The website is now defunct and there's not much information as to what happened to the drink after 2013. AMP AMP was an energy drink introduced in 2001 through Mountain Dew and marked their first step into the world. Originally only having their flavors derived from already existing Mountain Dew flavors, in 2009 the drink would get a massive rebranding. From here, the drink cemented itself in the world of big energy drinks, coming out with more and more flavors and sponsoring several major sporting events during the process. For some reason however, in the late 2010s, after a few other Mountain Dew energy drink variations, they decided to take away most of the flavors and go back to the Mountain Dew branding. No one really knows why they did this, as every article you read about AMP defines it as a leading competitor in the market, but maybe it's as simple as the times were changing. If you want more info on AMP, check out this video I made documenting its entire existence. G Fuel G Fuel was released in 2004 through Gamma Labs. It quickly rose to popularity as it was the first energy drink to focus on the gamer niche, giving gamers a drink that lets them stay focused and alert for long periods of time. It also has a more clean recipe, making it come across as a more safe option than your typical energy drink. It was originally released in water-soluble powders before eventually expanding their products to include carbonated versions of the drink pre-made. The drinks made waves by partnering with YouTubers like FaZe Clan and PewDiePie, even gaining their own flavors in the process. It seemed like nothing could go wrong for the company as they held the ring in the market. But in 2018, G Fuel was involved in a California lawsuit claiming their drinks contained lead. Not only that, it contained enough lead that it needed warning on the labels. And if that wasn't enough, just 4 years later in 2022, the company fired several talent managers claiming a restructuring was happening, after one of their executives allegedly used a slur in a conference call. They banned anyone in their Twitch streams bringing up the event, leading to several content creators announcing their department from the brand. Crunk Energy Crunk Energy was created in 2004 by Sidney Frank, responsible for the marketing of Grey Goose Vodka and Jägermeister, as well as rapper Lil Jon. The two met on a tour that was being sponsored by Grey Goose and got along well enough to decide to make an energy drink together. It was available regionally in the south to southwest US, but could be found in some big cities along the coast like New York, Chicago, and LA. The design was a collaborative effort between Frank and Lil Jon, with the idea being to get a consumer feeling energized. Only two years after its release, however, one of the founders, Sidney Frank, would pass away, leaving the future of the company unknown. His children inherited his real estate and eventually hired another co-CEO for the drink. They kept getting hard to work and released several flavors between 2006 and 2009 as well as starting to make plans to sell the drink along the Upper East Coast. While there are two other energy drinks on this list connected with rappers and music, this one actually stayed true to its roots and made it a goal to help sponsor artists and DJs at early points in their career, usually at a loss. They provide people with stages to perform on and promote them on their official website. But sadly, they never made enough of a jump to be able to sold nationally, and continue to be sold in a few select states as well as through their website and on Amazon. 4 Loco While technically an alcoholic drink, it wouldn't be a 2000s energy drink video without mentioning the infamous 4 Loco. Introduced in 2005 by three frat boys themselves, Chris Hunter, Jason Freeman, and Jeff Wright had always had a fascination with caffeine and alcohol. Originally marketed as an energy drink, it also contained wormwood, a supposed psychoactive. Yeah, the original Four Loco was crazy. It's not just myths when you hear all those horror stories from the past. However, the founders decided the wormwood got too expensive and in 2006 decided to just focus on improving the quality and taste of the drink. The company saw massive growth in just a few years and expanded nationally and then internationally just by 2008. And boy, it did not take long for the public to start getting concerned with these drinks. I mean, it was a national phenomenon at one point, with specific states starting to propose bans. In 2010, the FDA stepped in and issued a letter to the creators of 4 Loco along with three other caffeinated alcoholic beverage companies, saying that due to concerns for personal and public safety and health risks, the drink could not stay on the market in its current form, and they had 15 days to figure out how to fix the problem, before the FDA started seizing cases. Yeah, it was that bad. 
The concerns people were having was with the fact that the drink was being marketed to underage consumers, it caused blackouts, and due to the caffeine, it made it harder to tell when you're too drunk, causing alcohol poisoning. Well, allegedly. In 2010, the drink removed all caffeine, guarana, and taurine from their products and were left with just a purely fruity alcoholic drink, the exact thing that made them want to create a new product in general. It's pretty sad, or maybe it was for the better. You can still find them today, where they're still doing new things like collabing with Warheads. And let me know what you think of this list. Let me know what your favorites were, or if I forgot any crazy energy drinks from the era you grew up loving. Make sure to like and subscribe for more nostalgic content and new product reviews, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.